Hey guys, what's going on? It's Munchables here, and I've decided to do a quick video uh, to run through my expectations of how the last week or two goes of LPL before playoffs, what the seeding is going to look like, and, and therefore what I think um, the playoff bracket is going to end up looking like for the LPL. So without further ado, let's get straight into things. So I've got two documents here. I've got one that this was kind of the notes that I made as I was going. Um, that it's just talking about the remaining series for each of the teams. So the first one is FPX. It's got the current position, score and game difference, the remaining series and how I expect them to go, and then their expected finish. So based on these results, where they will place in the LPL. And I also have this spreadsheet that just kind of organizes the information a little bit better. And it's got my notes on each of the teams on the right as well. I'll share this document um, in the description underneath the video. In fact, I'll put a card up. So I guess it'll be over at that. You can't see my hand. The very top left corner. Um, so you can come and read this to your heart's content. This is probably a little bit easier to read. Um, but for the sake of ease, I'm going to use this document um, just to talk through. And I'm going to try and relatively quickly talk through my thoughts on each of the teams. So the way I see it right now, FBX currently, and as I wrote this, it was the 29th. So just to quickly clarify on that point as well. Um, there have been a couple of series since this point. So I recorded this here at the end of Thursday after these games, after Top Esports beat LNG. EDG beat V5, WE beat Rogue Warriors, RNG beat RA, which were all uh, predictions that I got correct on this sheet. So nothing in the sheet significantly changes uh, aside from, uh, I think I said WE would 2-0 Rogue Warriors. So a slight game difference. Uh, change there but nothing significant anyway disclaimers out of the way let's get into this fbx my first team <clears throat> now they're currently in second place in the lpl um let me get the standings on one screen and this document on the other here we go so as you can see fun plus second place in the lpl right now um really really good game difference looking fantastic obviously just edg a one win ahead of them um the really exciting thing about both EDG and FunPlus right now is that their last series, if you take a look, is against each other. It is very, very likely that the final series of the split decides who is the first seed. It could not be more exciting. It is literally, look, if you look at week nine on the schedule, it is literally the last series of the split to decide who gets seed number one, and also Top Esports and WE will be playing on that day. The final day is going to be a banger. Um, but for FPX, I anticipate that they will 2-0 JDG. I think JDG have looked really, really rough recently. I mean, they're on a four-loss streak. I think V5 goes without saying. And then the series against EDG, I personally am leaning the way of FPX. I think EDG have shown some weaknesses recently. FPX just seem to be going from strength to strength. Um... I personally am rating FPX and RNG as the top two teams in the LPL right now. And EDG, I think, have, have some stuff to prove. So for me, uh, FPX is going to finish in first seed here with a positive 17 game difference, which is absolutely insane. Um, so potentially best team in the region. Doing be as cracked. Look even stronger than earlier in the split after roster changes. Obviously, uh, Crisp went out for medical reasons. Nuggery was subbed for a series. Everything is back. It, it all just looks amazing. Even their bot side looks amazing as well. EDG, uh, I expect to finish in second place. I anticipate that they will 2-0 V5 and 2-0 LNG. I don't think that these are controversial takes at all. Um, but I do think that FPX will win that final series, which will push FPX over. Um, and the one thing that I haven't factored in here is actually game difference comes before head-to-head, -head, right? But yeah, no, so the game difference will be better for FPX. Yeah, because on this, there's an extra series in. Okay, this stuff does make sense. It's fine. It does make sense. So FPX would still be the first seed. I just think this team looks incredibly stable. Um, while I do think that there are some weaknesses uh, in the early game, and I do think that very proactive teams uh, will be able to beat them, and I think teams just with very strong individuals, especially on the top side, 
um, will be able to beat them. I do think that this is an incredibly stable team. I'm anticipating EDG will probably be our third seed going to Worlds. Uh, that's my conjecture, right? Well, not conjecture. That's my, uh, I guess, prediction. My estimate based on uh, what we've seen this split. RNG is probably going to finish in third place, which is insane considering they were hovering around 13th, 14th for a lot of the split. They're all the way up in fifth now. They are on an eight-win streak. They have literally beaten half of the LPL in a win streak. They are 17, or what is it, 16 and 1 in their last 17 games. Mind blowing. Honestly, the, the streak RNG is on it right now is disgusting. Um, yeah, so when I wrote this, they were in sixth place. They have won one of these series since. They 2 0 R8, which is what I had written in my predictions anyway. Uh, I'm expecting them to 2 0 W and BLG. I don't anticipate any issues here. Um, honestly, I'll be surprised if any of these teams get a single win against RNG. I think they'll finish third. Um, pretty good, not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, my, my worry was crying. Crying today looked amazing. Um, I think he's back on form. I think all of the worries about crying can start to subside. He did get solo killed by Fofo. Uh, well, it wasn't a solo kill. Hung came up as well. But I don't think it's a big enough issue, right? I don't ever anticipate Kryon is going to be like this dominant mid laner. I don't ever anticipate that he's going to be able to outlane Fofo and Knight and Doombi and all of these guys. I do anticipate that he's going to be able to have a greater influence on the rest of the map and then Gala and Xiaohu can be the main carries. And also Wei is playing out of his mind right now. Honestly, destructive performance. Uh, and I, I take this back now. I take this back now. After today's series, I don't think that they drop a game versus WE. Um, top Esports, currently in seventh position, um, but they face up OMG and WE. Like, I, I don't, in fact, you know what? I'm going to change this to 2 0. I don't think WE takes a game here. I think WE have looked really rough recently. Um, I think they'll finish up in fourth with 11 to 5 scoreline. Again, I don't think any of this is particularly controversial so far. I feel like these are very reasonable takes. Uh, I don't like none of these. Have been, the only one I think that is up for debate is EDG versus FPX, which I think there are very reasonable arguments on either side. I'm just leaning towards FPX, but I do think that's going to be a close one. Um, but yeah, 369 is back. Jo is uh, back on the roster as well. The team looks way better again. Also, bringing out Tom Kench support alongside Senna even after the rework is really interesting. They're not the only team that's done that. I forget who the other team was. I think it was WE. I think Missing was playing Tom Kenshin support. Um, really interesting. But I think, again, there's just so much talent on this roster. I think they'll be amazing in playoffs. Um, we just need Jackie Liv to stop running it. Sooning, I think we'll climb a little bit here. I think they'll finish in fifth. They only have two series to go, RA and TT. I think RA have been looking rougher and rougher recently. Um... I'm not super convinced by RA as we head towards playoffs anymore. I feel like things are starting to fall apart. And then obviously, Sooning should be able to demolish TT. So let, I want to just quickly address why I'm giving Sooning this this advantage over RA, right? Because RA are higher in the standings. and I'm, You know, RA had a lot of very positive things being said about them earlier on in the split. So let's talk about what what's changed in my mind for, for Sooning to have an advantage over them well when you look at the match history ra losing to rogue warriors ra dropping a game to blg it's not it's not pretty um Le Yen is often very careless with advantages that ra find for themselves he often does not play through priority and instead just invades because he thinks he can get away with it and it's very punishable i think sooning have been playing very intelligently and one of the best things that sooning has brought to the table is when it comes to the drafts and the plays in the early stages of the game, it's very clear that Sooning are tailoring their strategy around their opponent. And I think RA is one of these opponents that is very readable and very predictable. So I think stylistically in that matchup, Sooning, because of the way that they seem to be coming into these series extremely prepared, I think that they will have an advantage in should be able to outdraft and and then win through that. And I don't think Fofo will be able to get a massive lead like he usually does against um, against Angel. I think Angel will be able to to really step up in that series, especially if he's on something like a Silas. Um, so for me, I think Sooning are 
are seriously underrated right now, especially since On has um, improved significantly, and especially when he's on that Galio support, it looked incredible. So, all right. Other side of that matchup, Sooning. Um, I I've already kind of briefly talked about that. Um, I don't really know, honestly. So, they got 2 0 by RNG. I think that they will lose to Sooning. It could even be an 0-2 again, um, but I, th I think they should take a game against Sooning. They're 2-1 against IG. This team should 2-0 IG, but it's IG, so you kind of put the 1 there. I don't know. The IG's just... I don't know. This team, man. Um, yeah. All right. Very stable. Not exceptional. I think Fofo is the most exceptional player on this roster. Other than that, though, I don't know. They don't seem to read map plays very well. They don't seem to draft super well. Um, like, game number one today against RNG, they draft, like, Aphelios Thresh bot, but then they draft... Uh, Galio mid, which is fine with that, but then a Nocturne jungle and a Jace top. So you've got like this poke plus all in Galio who wants to ult the Aphelios to play for Peel, but he also wants to ult the Nocturnes going into the back line of the enemy. And it feels like this team is like getting spread apart and th there isn't like a very clear, coherent win condition going on. Um, and RNG obviously just picked them apart for that. I feel like there are a lot of silly weaknesses like that which ra have set themselves up for so i'm hoping we can get some cleaner drafts out of them and maybe they'll look a bit better so we currently in fifth place they are going to fall a lot i'm expecting them to go down to seventh um which is unfortunate for them because uh top six would make playoffs a lot nicer it would mean they have to do one less best of five um and they're very likely to go up against who did i put in 10 omg in the first round of playoffs which i would expect we to win um i think we like yeah rogue warriors ig they should win they should lose to rng i don't even think that they'll take a game off top esports to be honest but i'm just gonna leave it as it was when i wrote it um i just think this is a team that has big shot calling issues i think this is a team that you know when they look good they look amazing when they don't look good they look really really not good um i just think that they are one of these teams that when it comes to when it comes to the mid game and early game honestly sometimes they just do dumb shit and and just get taken apart for it um i feel like when they can mechanically outplay people, they win games. And when the other teams know how to play, know what you want to do and, and play around that, that's when WE really struggles. So inevitably, the top teams are going to always beat WE. Um, LNG next. Currently in third place. They're, I'm expecting them to go down to eighth. Now, a lot of that is really unfortunate, right? Because... They only have one game left. It's against EDG. I expect EDG to 2 0 that. Um, they have 10 wins. The fact that 10 wins is likely to put them to 8th place is insane. This 8th is based off of um, the, the scores and game differences that I'm projecting for each team. So this 8th is not like me shitting on them. This is just if they do lose 0 2 to EDG. With my projections from the other teams, this is where they're likely to finish. Um, pretty sad for LNG with how insane of a start to the split that they had. But at the end of the day, 10 wins this split just isn't good enough because look at the bottom teams. We have four teams with losses in the double digits, which means each win is less valuable because there are more wins in the top half of the bracket. Um, basically, the way that it works, think about them like... Uh, Kind of like a currency, right? Where if you have too much currency, the, the more currency you have, if you just keep printing money, each piece of money becomes less valuable, right? In theory. I, obviously, I'm super oversimplifying economics there, but um, the more losses in this bottom four, the worse performing the bottom teams are, the more wins required for high seeding because there are these losses translate to wins up here, right? So um, the more losses at the bottom, the more wins required to make it into playoffs, which is why we're seeing that there are teams with eight wins, which previously would have gained you playoffs, doesn't work like that anymore um, because of because of how many losses the bottom teams have. So the worse the bottom teams, the better you have to be 
to make it into playoffs. Weirdly enough, right? It's kind of strange. Um, but the yeah, the less consistent. Oh, I guess well, they are. They've been very consistent. <laughs> um, it, you, it makes the teams in the middle of the table have to be more consistent. Anyway, yeah, kind of a foregone conclusion. Um, I just think this team is just unexciting, honestly. Uh, I think Ale is inconsistent, and I think he's starting to tilt in the games. You can see a few plays from him where it's starting to look a bit like, all right, mate, you got to calm down. Icon as well, I'm really unconvinced by. I just think this team is, I don't know. I never really had faith in this team in the first place. I'm kind of sad because I feel like Tarzan, Light, and Iwandi are pretty great, but I just... I think Ale can be great. I think he just needs to calm it down a little bit sometimes. And Icon, I'm kind of I'm kind of over. Uh, BLG next. Seems like they're going to stay exactly where they are. Uh, nothing exciting here. 2-0 up, 0-2 RNG. They're a decent team. Zika, he capitalized his name in game and he's capitalized his play as well. Looks really good recently. But generally speaking, another team that I'm just not that excited about. Um I think they're just so-so, right? They're like a middle-of-the-table team. When they're against the bottom teams, it's going to be fine. When they're against other teams, they, the players are just not as good. The coordination just isn't as good. Um, it doesn't feel like I need to go super deep on BLG. They're just pretty uninspiring. OMG, not the same story, right? Um, because we have this team that, like, their matchups, again, should be relatively simple. I would... I would hope this is a 2-0, honestly, over LGD, because LGD have looked really rough recently. Um, but they should lose to top esports. This is a team that has massively talented individual players, right? You've got Aki, you've got Cream, you've got Abel. Even Cold has had some really, really good games as well. New is the player I'm least convinced by on this roster. Um, when it works, it works. The problem is they've had a very static list of strategies available to them. And so a lot of games, teams just know how to play against Dive. And that's when things start to fall apart. You can ban out Cream pretty easily because he has pretty limited champion pools. So um, if Cream can be set up, this is a team that should make playoffs. Um, but I think a lot of it rests on Cream. Also, Kaiser kind of falling out of the matter has hurt this team because it feels like that was really Abel's um, best champion by a margin. So JDG, it's a very sad story, right? They're currently 11th place with 7-7. Seven and seven. I expect them to finish at a tied 8-8 eight and eight scoreline. They'll lose to FBX. They'll beat Rogue Warriors. They could even lose to Rogue Warriors, honestly, uh, because JDG have looked really rough recently. And Rogue Warriors keep taking people to three games. Look at this. They took top. They took LNG. They took WE. RA, Sooning, IG. In fact, they beat IG. Like, oh, well, they beat RA and Sooning. Um, I think Rogue Warriors are... I, I wish that they'd had these kind of performances earlier on in the split. Um, but JDG, I think they're going to finish 8-8. Eight and eight. It's not going to be enough to get into top 10 because of what I talked about earlier with the win-loss value. Um, I just wish they'd play Mystic. I don't know why they didn't. I'm not sure if that's like public information in China and I'm just not privy to it, but I don't know. I, I just don't understand why not. Loken feels like he's had such a rough split. Feels like there are huge champion pool issues for this team. I feel like the top half of the map is really good, but Loken and Lumo have had a really, really rough year for themselves. Uh, the JDG from 2020 at this point is dead. Um, LGD. Again, another team I was really excited for this split. Um, you know, it is what it is. I think that there are parts of this team that are really good. I love Shadow and Shie. I think that's an insanely good combo. I even quite like Mark, honestly. Um, Venus had some pretty good games too. Garvey had some pretty good games. Ultimately, though, I think this is just a roster that's in need of a rebuild. Um, build a roster around Shie and Shadow. Keep those two core pieces. Build around that. And I think you could make a, a really, really, really strong contending team. They started off strong. It's been getting weaker and weaker across the course of the split. I'm expecting them to finish in 12th. Uh, and then the final one, for some reason, doesn't have a title, but it's IG. Um, IG in 13th place. I expect them to stay in 13th place. Uh, I don't really expect big things. I'm not 
I'm not anticipating some huge resurgence from IG. The Miracle Run is very much dead. Even if they win all of their games, it's very unlikely that they make it to playoffs. They need a couple of these teams to really suck, and they also need JDG and LGD to suck to make it into playoffs. But I don't think that's happening. Um, yeah, I don't know. Sad times for IG. Sad times for IG. So, anyway, that is my playoffs predictions. That is my perspective on things. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I would love to have a discussion. I'm more than happy to, to chat away in the comments with you guys on whether you think my takes are good, whether you think they're bad, whether you expect the teams to, to finish up in the way that I've suggested. But for anyone, just to round things out, there is your screenshot of the teams in order of how I think they're going to finish. So FPX in first, EDG, RNG, Top Esports. That's your top four at the end of the regular split before playoffs. Um, top Esports Sooning, RA, W, LNG, and BLG to make it into playoffs. Oh, and, and OMG, sorry. The 11 is wrong. It's the 10 here because <laughs> there's one at the top. All right. I hope that helped. I will link the document underneath this video. Thank you very much for watching. I know it's been a bit of a long one, 21 minutes and counting, but yeah, appreciate you. Follow me on Twitter and all that good stuff, and I'll catch you later.